Greetings everyone, it's Mr. Shatra again. Welcome to Back to Basics. What we are looking at now, we are looking at Euclidean geometry and we are looking at, you know, typical exam questions that they may ask in the 11th grade, right? Now let's see in terms of what is it that we can do here. So let's look at this particular question. They say the diagram shows the what? The circles with center Q and also O. And you are given that your angle RM, TR, it is 40 degrees. And they've also, you know, reinstated that MT and RT are not necessarily tangent of those particular, of the small circle, right? <clears throat> so, which means now uh, that that one is not going to be what? This line MT and also our line RT is not going to be necessarily a what? A tangent. Now, how can we go about it then? solving this particular question let's look at the first question here which is 3.1 so in 3.1 they want us to find out what is going to be our angle q2 and angle q2 is this angle here right now what is it that you're going to say about your angle uh q2 for an example right now uh for angle q2 now if you can look at this if you can look at uh this point, let me just make this your M starting from M. Uh let me just draw this the M, right? Let me just draw this using a different color, right? Uh, this just draw that. Uh if let's say we can draw this, right? What is it that you can see here? Can you see that this is going to be a four-sided shape, right? And all the four vertices, number one vertex, the second vertex, the third vertex, and the fourth vertex are touching the what? They are touching the circumference of your circle, right? So which therefore makes this to be your cyclic quad. Oh, it's okay. So, and you, you've seen how I came to my conclusion that this is a cyclic quad, right? All the four corners, of this particular four-sided figure are touching the circumference of our cycle. That's okay. So therefore, this is going to be a cycle quad. So which means now, I can come back now and apply the what the theorems of our cyclic quad. For an example, what is it that I know? Now, for an example, I would know that my angle Q2 plus my 40 degrees, right? Which means this angle and this angle, these are opposite angles, right? Opposite are uh, angles of the what of your cyclic quad what you get of my cyclic uh quad right because that is my cyclic quad and what which which one is going to be my cyclic quad it's going to be m uh q r t how to get that's going to be my cyclic quad so therefore which means now this is going to be close to 108 degrees right how to get Remember, opposite angles of your cyclic quad are supplementary. So Q2 plus 4 degrees gives you 108, which means my angle Q2 is going to be given by what? It is going to be given by uh, 140 degrees, right? So when you say 180 subtract 40, that's what you get, 140. Oh, again. So which means this particular angle here, it is going to be equals to my 140 degrees. And it is important that whenever you found an angle, you go back to the diagram. And you actually, you know, make reference of that particular angle so that uh, the next coming question, you can also apply the value that you have, uh, you know, that you have calculated. Now, so the second one is, they want us to find out what is going to be my angle, what? My angle uh, Q1, right? Uh, my angle uh, O1. So they want me to find out what is going to be the angle O1, which is this one. Now, how can we go about it? calculating for angle O1, right? Now, let me just erase some of these other things here, right? So that uh, you can see in terms of uh, what is going to my angle O1, right? Now, when you look at this, I want you to look at this here, right? If you can look at this particular angle here, right? I'm just using this color and this particular color, right? Look at this particular color. Now, is there a theorem of this sort that you know yes angle at the center is going to be two times the angle uh what uh the angle at the circumference. i would get so which means now my angle 
my angle what my angle o1 is going to be close to 8 degrees because it's going to be two times angle what angle t oh it's okay so which means this is going to be uh this what is the reason it's going to be angle uh at center right this is angle at center is two times the angle at the circum how to get so basically that's going to be our reason right that's we are going to say the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference right so that's what we are going to be having now which means now we already found that this angle is going to be eight degrees this angle here is going to 140 degrees now what is it that they are also looking for now uh if let's say we start here uh, now, uh, if they, they are looking for uh, our angle, uh, in this particular case, our 3.3 point, our three point uh, three is looking for PMO, 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 right? So what is going to be the angle PMO, PMO? So basically, they are looking for this particular angle here, right? Now, how can we then go about them? Now, I want you to look at something, right? Uh, now, if you can look at P, Q, R, remember they said Q is the center, right? So can you see that P, uh, Q, and also Q and R, this particular line makes a diameter. How to get this particular line, this particular solid line here, it makes our diameter, right? And what is it that we know about the diameter of the smaller circle? We know that the angle that subtend or the angle that is subtended by a diameter is going to be close to what? It is going to be close to 90 degrees, right? So therefore, my PMO, my angle PMO is going to be close to 90 degrees, right? This is going to be angle at my semicircle. How to get? So basically, that is going to be that, right? Now, hopefully, that's, that made sense to you. Now, if, let's say, we move to our M3, right now or rather to our uh 3.4 now what is it that we are looking for in 3.4 so we already know that this angle m1 and m2 is going to what it's going to 90 degrees oh to get now what is it that you, can, you are going to calculate also now uh, now uh so they are p m o o we've already so what we found here we didn't necessarily find p m o but we found PMR. This is going to be my angle PMR. Look at me. This is my angle PMR. PMR. Now, if I'm looking for my PMO, what is it that I need to add? So, which means now, yes, I need to add what is going to be my angle, what? My angle M3, right? So, now, what is going to be my angle M3? What is it that I can do to calculate uh, my angle M3? Now, for an example, if we can look at this, if I can make you, uh, or rather, if you can focus on this particular angle, let me just, if you can focus on this particular triangle, let me just write this with the color, right? Uh, let's just, if let's say we are focusing on this particular triangle, M-O-R, can you see that M-O-R, because M-O and also R-O are your diameter, which makes this to be your isosceles triangle, right? And you know that the base angle, of your isosceles triangle, they give us what? Uh, they give us, or rather, the base angle of an isosceles angle, uh, triangle. They are going to be the same, right? So, which means now, what is it that we know? So, which means if this is eight degrees, if this is eight degrees, right? What is it that I know? So, I know that this is going to be what? Uh, my M, my angle M three, uh, plus what? my angle m3 plus my angle r2 plus what plus my angle o1 right this is must give me 180 degrees because these are going to be some of angles in a triangle right some of angles in a triangle but i know that now uh, i know that my m2 or my m3 rather plus my angle r what my angle r3 is going to be close to 180 degrees right because my angle r o O one, one it is 8 degrees, right? So after that, what is it that I know? I know that that my angle M3 is equal to what? Is equal to my angle R3. Why? Why are we, Why am I saying that? Remember, these are going to be uh, angle, uh, opposite angles 
equal sides, right? Remember, this is equal to what? This is equal to form by what? Isosceles triangle. So, which means equal sides subtend opposite, uh, equal sides subtend equal angle. How to get? So, which means opposite angles that are equal, right? That are equal to, or uh, the opposite angles that are subtended by equal sides, they are going to be equal, right? So, which means my angle M3 is going to be given by what? It is going to be given by 50 degrees. So, now, which my M, which that makes my PMO, my angle PMO to be equal to what? To be equal to 90 degrees plus 50 degrees because this angle here now, it is 50 degrees. So, which means my PMO, my PMO is going to be equal to what now? 50 plus 90 gives me what? It gives me my 110. What? This is going to be 130. 40 rather. Oh, it's good. So this is going to give me my 140 degrees. Now, from here, what else are we then looking for? Now, the last question that you are having there is 3.4. What is it that you can calculate in angle 3.4? Right? Now, if you look your angle 3.4, here they want you to calculate what is going to be the angle P. Now, my angle Q2 is an exterior angle of your what? Is an exterior angle of your what? Of your triangle, right? So, and we know that the, this theorem states that now an exterior angle, an exterior angle of your what? Of your triangle is equal to the what? To the two interior opposite angles, right? So, which means now, we are saying, or rather, we are saying that my angle Q2 uh, is going to be equal to what is going to be equal to my angle P plus my angle M1. What is going to be uh, a reason for that? Uh, now, this is going to be same as what? This is going to be uh, an exterior. This is an exterior angle of my what? Of my triangle. Now, what is it that now we can take from here? Oh, uh, I want you to also take note of this now. Uh, so already now, uh, if this is my exterior angle of your triangle, what is it that I want you to take note of here then? Uh, now, I want you to look at my uh, my what? This, uh, your PQ. Can you see that PQ and also your QM? This, your PQ and also your QM are going to be equal. Why are they equal? Because from Q to P, it is going to be your radius. And also from Q to what? To M, this is also your radius, right? So which means both of these sides are equal. So now what is it that we know about the sides that are equal? We know that then it subtends what? It subtends equal angle. How to get? So which means then now, uh, Q2 is equal to what? P and also plus what? Plus angle M1. So therefore, which means now this is going to what? Uh, now, from there, what is it that we can take uh, from this? We are saying now our angle P plus our angle M1 is going to be cause what? 140 degrees. But now, but angle P is going to be cause to angle M1. What is going to be the reason uh, behind that? We know that our uh, opposite angles or angles opposite equal sides, these are going to be the angles that are going to be opposite equal sides how to get so these angles these are angles that are opposite to what to equal sides if you can look at the the sides they are equal how to get so now which means therefore it makes our angle p to be close to what uh, to be close to what to be close to the 70 degrees which is the same as what which is going to be the same as angle m1 because angle m1 and also p1 still must give us what 70 degrees right so, which means at the end, my angle P is going to be given by what? It is going to be given by 70 degrees. Hopefully, this makes sense to you. And thank you very much.